Good afternoon, everyone. Our panel session will start shortly. Before we begin, I'd like to share our 2023 color mix forecast. The theme for our color forecast this year is Terra. This is where we dwell, what is ours, and who we are. Our 2023 color trend report will reveal collections of nature-inspired hues, of craft and storytelling, of kindness and healing, and the fundamental joy we all share in a life well lived. Let's start with our full collection video. We created four unique palettes from our collection of 40 trend colors. These hues represent the key color directions for 2023. As you can see, the collection consists of lots of color. There still are plenty of soft muted neutrals to bring balance, but color is coming back. Just as every new season brings a fresh mix of stunning trend colors, every season's starring shades tell a story. In 2023, we will continue to be focused on ourselves and the human connection to the planet. Biome explores the natural environment with a continuation of biophilic themes. Lore celebrates the creativity and community that we share. Nexus is emblematic of our humanity and the care we seek and give to each other. And Origin is about joy and taking the best part of ourselves into an optimistic future. To introduce each palette, we will share a brief color inspiration video, followed by the colors associated. Let's begin. With beautiful earth tones and a blend of muted greens and blues, the Biome Palette takes inspiration from nature and the natural world. This palette preserves peace in an atmosphere of delicate mushroom topes, lichen grays, rich earth tones, and the colors of a cloud-studded sky. The lore color story is about reconnection with an intricate mix of ancient reds, powdery pastels, and bejeweled tones, and embracing the transformative power of passionate creativity. The lore palette tells the story of the maker's sensibility inherent in human nature. The colors of Nexus exude warmth, compassion, and collectives, driving so many of our recent shared experiences. This palette includes natural clays, sun-baked desert sands, grounding browns, and soft, soulful white. You can see the 2023 color of the year, reddened point, in this palette. It is in the middle of the top row. Reddened point reflects what we've been seeing in terms of neutrals warming up and earth tones evolving. Now on to our final video for the palette Origin. These colors in the Origin palette are colors of pure personal joy. 
Residential spaces are experiencing an exuberant revival of tried and true classics and updated takes on time-honored aesthetics. We recharge with free-spirited brights, magnetic deeps, and a whisper of restful neutrals. And that concludes our color forecast. Each palette characterization allows us to paint a picture of a future where people are the nexus of change in a time when shared experience unites us all. And now we'll begin our panel discussion. Welcome. My name is Janet Miller. I'm a designer account executive with Sherwin-Williams, and we're here today to talk about color conversations and color mix color forecasting with our panel of experts. And now I'd like you to meet our panel. If you could start us off, Jeff. Sure. Uh, my name is Jeff Hester. I work at Hester Decorating. Uh, we're a family-run painting business. We've been around for 55 years. My father, Tom, started the company. Uh, and he wanted to be the best painter on the North Shore. And my brother and I are second generation now, and we run the business. And I actually have my children, my three boys are in the business, so we are a third generation company. I'm Annie Conway. I am one of the two designer account executives for Sherwin-Williams in Chicago. I've been with the company going on seven years now. Uh, I started in our management training program and worked my way up to be a store manager. I was a sales rep after that, so I worked directly with people like um, Jeff and his team, anybody who purchases paint. And now it brought me to Chicago to be a designer rep um, to support designers in the area. Hi, I'm Lauren Coburn. I'm an architectural interior designer. Um, I came to Chicago originally to attend the Art Institute of Chicago, got my degree in interior architecture. And from there, my first job was working for Stanley Tigerman and Margaret McCurry, um, two architects that I had studied. I had studied their work my whole life. And so it was a very exciting first job. And it was there that I learned how to be an interior designer and definitely create interiors that are very architectural in nature. And I've been on my own now for 19 years at Lauren Coburn LLC. Hi, I'm Joan Craig. I'm an architect and designer. Um, we, I've been in Chicago, I guess it's been 17 or 18 years now. Um, we have offices in New York and Chicago. We are a collective of 16 architects and designers working on residential projects and hospitality. So happy to be here today. Thank you, Sherwin-Williams, and make it better. Thank you so much. Honored to be here as well. Yeah. So we'll start with Joan. Joan, can you tell me what design services are offered through your company? Sure. Um, sometimes we are architects for with other designers. Sometimes we are designers with other architects. I'd say most of the time we provide both architecture and design services. And we work on everything mm -hmm. from large-scale projects, master planning for clubs, for instance, private clubs. We have done work with the Women's Athletic Club here in Chicago over the past 10 years or so. The Saddle and Cycle, we're just starting a project with the architects Jip Van Wysey and Herr Schott at Indian Hill. Um, so larger projects down to freestanding homes. We're working on a house right now in Milwaukee and a family compound in New Hampshire. Um, down to very small projects. I mean, we have a lot of repeat clients, and if a client asks us to do a child's dorm room or powder room, we're all in because, um, you know, we enjoy getting to know families and developing relationships. Yeah. Lauren, what types of projects do you offer to your clients, and how do you help them select color? Sure. I work generally, primarily in residential. Most of my jobs are residential. Um, I have a passion for really getting to know people and the psychology behind design, and I think that's what draws me to residential design specifically. Um, I, I do all full scope interior design, although lately I've really been mainly helping people build homes ground up, renovate full homes, and really be part of the full scope from day one and working collaboratively with architects and builders, which are my favorite projects. Um, it's the collaborations that I think create my best work. And so I've been doing a lot of new home construction, really since COVID, building a lot of homes ground up, a lot of full home renovations, just given the little inventory out there and just people figuring out through COVID exactly how they wanna live and how their family functions and what, and what they want a house to look like. Good. 
and, and Jeff. color. I'm sorry. No, and and no. help with color. Of course. So the very first thing I do is ask people when I start working with them to pull imagery, which could be pictures from Pinterest or House or magazines. And I, I tend to be very good at looking at those photos and getting to know the client. Um, again, that's kind of where the psychology of all this comes into and what keeps me intrigued. Um, and getting to know people not only through what they say, but what they're showing me in photos. Um, and I, it's easy for me once I look at a lot of their imagery to really understand, you know, there could be a color that's a trend, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna make everyone feel good. And people have such different reactions to color in general. Um, it's very interesting to me to see what they, how they associate color and how it makes them feel and how I can have two different clients that feel completely different, differently about yeah. a certain color um, and how, where they want it in their home, you know, where it's too much of a commitment, where it's not enough of a commitment um, and just things like that and getting to know them. So really it's about getting to know both the client and what's appropriate architecturally um, in terms of the architectural nature of the home. Thank you, thank you. And Jeff, what types of services are offered through your company and what's the one question you wish that customers would ask? Um, I think that the uh, services we offer is anything in the painting field. Um, it can be painting homes, interior, exterior. We have a commercial division that we started 20 years ago that does office space. Mm -hmm. um, the one question that I would uh, want clients to ask me is uh, it's a statement that they use they say we've had other painters come in and say we're just like Hester <laughs> and I say wow so the standard that the other painters are referring to is here with you now let me service your home let me help you if they need a designer I'll give them a list of designers like the two panelists here um, and they can decide. If they don't have a designer, I kind of let ask them to do the same homework and go explore some colors, look on the internet for ideas. Um, if they're gonna use wallpapers and they're not using the, a designer, I ask them to pick some wallpapers so when I go there to do the estimate, I can measure for the exact wallpaper that they want. Um, and beside that, just anything that you know, they want to do in the painting industry, we take care of. Nice. Annie, can you tell us more about Sherwin-Williams and the resources that you offer? Of course. Um, we have so many resources available. For homeowners, we have a great tool. It's called our Color Snap app. It's a visualizer tool. Um, you can upload your own photos of your home or look at the photos we have on the app and see different lighting, different colors, see how they look. Um, look at different palettes if you need inspiration. We also have for homeowners a blog called Tinted. It's on our website. It's for homeowners specifically. It's a great source of inspiration and looking at do-it-yourself projects, um, tips and tricks along the way. So those would be two main tools for homeowners. But I think our biggest asset is our people. We have 114 stores here in Chicago and our staff were trained in every aspect of the store, you're trained from the ground up to learn our products, learn our company, learn how to help our customers and give them the service that they deserve. So you have the, you're available to talk to these people at the stores seven days a week. Um, so definitely I recommend going into your local Sherwin-Williams store and meeting with the staff, introducing yourself, um, teaching them about the product the projects you're working on, see what products work well, what color inspiration you need. And then for paint professionals, we have um, the stores, of course, but we have sales reps as well who work directly with the painters, the contractors, anyone who purchases with a professional account out of our stores. And these reps act as problem solvers for um, jobs. They go to job sites, they help figure out what substrate needs certain coatings. Um, we have our Pro Plus app for painters, contractors. It's a tool that they're available to use, an online order 24 seven. Um, you have access to store inventory. You can get free delivery. Um, so there are so many tools, so many resources that are available to you. Definitely go into your local store and then 
Me, in my role, um, I provide color tools to designers. I get you guys Fandex, larger color samples. Um, I give you inspiration. A great tool that we have is um, our color forecasting, which you saw a brief clip of earlier, that we have a team in Cleveland that Sue Wadden is the head of it, the color head of, director of color marketing. And she and her team for a year, they go gain inspiration all around the world, um, figure out what trends are coming, what fashion trends, home trends, color trends, and they make this forecast. And they get together once a year and create a huge forecast for everybody to look at. So stay tuned, there'll be some sneak peeks along the way, um, probably late summer, early fall. Nice. And speaking of color trends and forecasting, Joan, would you tell us a little more about what your insights are for color forecasting and how that relates to larger versus smaller projects? I would say that, um, well, first of all, I think color is probably the most powerful tool we have in our arsenals for before and afters. Um, color is really transformational. And, um, we love, you know, doing these before and after shots where we'll begin, for instance, with a simple white room and we'll paint it a color. And I'd say right now it seems that people are really looking for, um, for colors that convey warmth and um, comfort. Uh, personally, I'm at, at a point where my office keeps laughing at me because it seems like with every project I want to do a, a blue and brown story, combining warm and cool colors. Mm -hmm. And um, and I would say in terms of design in general, our clients are looking for, um, number one, comfort. I mean, when we think about emerging from the cocoon of COVID and leaving our sweatpants behind, people are still looking for that um, sort of level of comfort. But um, they're interested in getting uh, back to a stronger sense of style. And um, chic is very much on everybody's minds right now as we're sort of coming out of the last few years. Um, in terms of other trends, I would say uh, Ease is another thing. Ease of maintenance, um, having a sort of relaxed, um, a relaxed home. So we're looking at a lot of textiles, indoor, outdoor textiles that are no muss, no fuss. Um, what else would you say, Lauren? I mean, those are sort of uh, uh, comfort, ease, relaxation, warmth, <laughs> chic. I mean, those are the words that come to my mind. I would completely agree. Um, I am doing more dramatic rooms now that mm -hmm. are very chic. Um, I think that People in general since COVID, I know I'm definitely guilty of having too much gray and white on my website. Um, and I think now people really since COVID, I think want unique yeah. and something that their friends don't have. Um, they want moments of surprise walking through their house that they can't just go and see anywhere. They and want so, it to be personal. Yes, and to be personal. So I've definitely been using more like artesians, more of Hester doing you know beautiful finishes on walls. Um, things that are special. Mm -hmm. And I think like the, the crafts people and the artisans are just fewer and further between now. And I think people are returning, you know, back to wanting that special, you know, finish or that special thing in their homes and, and color is one way to do it. I agree with you hundred percent. Yeah, it's nice to hear. And Lauren, what about the difference between interior and exterior? How do you see that process of what's trending applying to both interior and exterior? Is it the same or is it different? Um, definitely different. I, with the homes that I've been building and collaborating with excellent architects and, and builders, um, I definitely think people are willing to take more risks inside than outside. Um, but it's also important to me that the exterior of a home does flow through the interior. So it all the interior and the exterior always feel seamless. Um, and that my, my thing that I've always said is pick your focal points. So you don't have too many amazing things going on at once because it's just too much of a good thing. So maybe if you do have kind of neutrals flowing through the body of a home, maybe you enter the powder room and it's a beautiful jewel and a, a happy a surprise, surprise, right? It's like yeah. a, just a happy surprise. Um, and so that's how I, I tend to kind of bridge drawing cues from the architect and kind of being inspired by the architecture um, and bringing those colors through, but also creates creating kind of moments of joy. Yeah. Nice. So we'll start off with a lightning round, uh, just everyone picking their favorite um, two colors, or go-to Sherwin colors. Um, 
if you want to start, Lauren, since you, we, sure. we left off with you, just to give us your two favorite colors. Well, I love Repose Gray because I think it's the gray that people still like, but it's the warmer of the gray. It's the grayish, as everyone's saying. It's kind of like going back to what Joan said, bringing through the warmth, but still it's a nice neutral, I think for people who don't want gold or tan or yellow, which a lot of people are adverse to now. Um, and then for a pop of color and surprise, I just did a room in Moscow Midnight, which I Pretty. loved in a high gloss, which a library Beautiful. was just oh, nice. really just rich and warm and, and cozy. chic and sophisticated, yeah. but cozy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Joan? You know, it's, it's funny because again, going back, yours is sort of a blue and brown story too, or a gray, yeah. brown and, um, and blue. And I would say there is a color that I just love, Sherwin-Williams color, that's sort of the, the tone of a, of a paper bag that's called double latte that I just adore. It's, it's really warm, but also very neutral. And um, pairing that with something like Cascade, which is a blue or is it a green? It's a very deep, rich color that um, it's just very unusual. It's, it's mm -hmm. uh, depending on the light, it, it appears very differently. And I, I love, I love that subtlety. My turn? Yeah. Okay. Um, one of my favorite whites right now is Cheviot. It's from our new collection, our Emerald Designer Edition series. It's just a gorgeous white. It's not too warm. It's not too cool. It's not too stark white. It's, it's great. And then another color from our Emerald collection is Armory. Again, it has it's a real deep a nice brown tone, a little bit of black to it. It's it's a great color. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm going to be biased. I'm going to give you a third color. Um, iron ore. It's a classic. Oh, has nice. a little bit of charcoal to it, but black. And you can't go wrong. Those are my favorites. <laughs> How about you, Jeff? Um, to tell you the truth, when it comes to color, I don't have a specific color that I have in my head. I like to... If the customer needs help, I like to see what they have, what they want to achieve, and then help them find what they want. And to be totally honest with you, I really don't have a favorite. I want it to be their favorite, and then I'll install it. I like that. Yeah, Good yeah. answer. <laughs> I have a question for you, Jeff. Yeah. Have you ever had a client who had a, a color wish that you thought was going to be absolutely horrible, ridiculous. <laughs> yes. And ha have you spoken up or h how did you deal with that? Yeah, I have. Um, what I'll do is if they, if I can't try to nicely explain to them, this might not work in this area. Yeah. I'll actually say, you know what, why don't we paint this wall, one wall, and you live with it t today and tonight. And then tomorrow you still love it. Yeah. Then we'll finish the room. But I'd rather you see it in a full scale as opposed to, you know, a two by three card. Ample. Yeah, so. That's why we, we love working with these guys. <laughs> we, we wind up doing mock-ups like that all the time because nothing um, can replace actually seeing it and living with it in different lights. And the other thing that we love doing is looking at samples right adjacent to each other. So if you have a wall color, you want to see that right next to your trim mm -hmm. and right next to your ceiling so that Colors really influence each other, and you want to see how they react together, um, and then it's uh, it's going to be compatible and, mm -hmm. and dramatic. I would agree because I I feel like yeah. sometimes when you show a client a color, it may look white, right? But it has a little hint of color. But if you show it to them next to white trim, it you, you can all of a sudden time. see that color. Exactly. You can see that beautiful subtle color coming through and how much it changes it. So I always as well. I love samples, putting putting up the wall sample with the trim yeah. and on the ceiling and really seeing them in different planes. And that's what, I mean, Hester's so patient with working with designers and collaborating with them and, and understanding that <laughs> sometimes we're a little crazy and we have, to, <laughs> we have to see all these samples to feel really perfect about something and about a color and a finish. And they're wonderful with working with us. Through. Another thing when you're looking at color, what a lot of people don't realize is you should always have a neutral background when you're looking at always color. because mm -hmm. like this room we're sitting in I'm looking at a blue wall yeah if I if the designers pick five colors and I make boards with the five colors or I take and I paint a sample on that wall 
it's not going to look like the real color because of what it's surrounded by. Yeah. You have to have a, a neutral white background and then you see the actual true color. Your eyes get fooled by what's surrounding it. Mm -hmm. So you will never really see the true color that they're trying to let them know to use. So I always suggest mm -hmm. that we white out a wall yeah. before we look at That's samples. So true. That's you true. know, it's, it's interesting. We were just working with you all on a, a project that um, involved a mural. And in talking to the artist and selecting the color for the walls, our goal was really to make the mural really sparkle. So what we did was we took a look at the whitest color in the mural. And with the wall color, we went slightly deeper so that the lightest thing you'd notice, the thing that would really jump would be the white in, in the flower of this mural. And um, it's, it's like magic. Oh. It really, it's wonderful. I love that. Well, to wrap up the favorite colors, I'm gonna throw in a couple as well. Um, I think Gossamer Veil is, is trending in the future in terms of a neutral that's warmer and also eventide. Going back to our Emerald Designer Edition collection, it's more of that coastal feel and it really relates to what you mentioned, Joan, people wanting to be comfortable and, and kind of spinning off of the cocooning effect. Um, and speaking of futures, the last few years has really changed the way we operate our businesses, right? So Lauren, can you start and let me know what your, um, how you're seeing that play out in your business and what you anticipate for the future? Yeah, I've, I've really been building a lot more homes ground up and really helping clients you know, on a collaborative team of whether I'm helping them find the architect and the builder or an architect and builder or builders bringing me in, referring me or I'm referring them. Um, forming a team of collaborative, like-minded individuals, because I think there's a million designers and there's a million architects and, and there are a million painting contractors, but there are very few really in Chicago that in Chicago land that I think are collaborative and really enjoy working on a team and want to work on a team and understand that we can't do everything well. Everyone should really come to the table and do what they do best and come together and create the best product. Um, so I've really enjoyed just working with very talented architects and builders um, since COVID because I think there's just been very little inventory. Um, and I've really enjoyed working with real estate brokers as well with this too, um, because we're all kind of in this together, right? Like it's, it's a big journey from when someone purchases land to building a home to um, selling their last home. And so I think it's, it really takes a team. I mean, it, it really kind of takes a village to create a beautiful home, but I think the trend is that um, people just can't find enough of already built homes that not only are beautiful, like people will think of interior design as, oh, it's a luxury, you know, and I hire a designer and they make my home beautiful. But it really goes so much further than that. And I think during COVID, people really realize that so much of hiring an interior designer is, is logistics and function of their home and circulation and, I mean, People, I think, realized during COVID that design affects a lot of aspects of their life, their interpersonal relationships, they're wanting to kill their spouse because they're being too noisy and they need, you know, a quieter workspace now. Um, having kids that, you know, they're telling to go in another room, but they don't have another room to go into. I think it's just design is so much more now, or as much now about logistics and function and circulation and how people use a home and how every family uses a home differently. Um, so I've really enjoyed kind of the full process of building homes because I think we're able to create exactly, you know, one home might be unorthodox in terms of how that family thinks about how they want to live, but it makes all the homes I'm working on different. Mm -hmm. Well said. And Joan, can you tell us what success looks like for your business in the next few years? You know, I, I would say probably, um, my biggest professional accomplishment has been the team that I've built and my goal and Lauren and, and I were talking about this earlier just mm -hmm. how competitive the market right is is right now for talent is just keeping our team together and keeping us um, working on larger and more exciting and better and more fun projects and more fabulous places. Um, it's been interesting with, with COVID. I think um, a lot of our clients have 
moved elsewhere, or they moved elsewhere. A lot of Chicagoans have wound up going to Florida, Arizona, California. I mean, that's always been the case, but more and more so. And we've really um, developed many more ways to work remotely and to remain close to our clients no matter where they are through um, monitoring of job sites, through uh, creating presentations and packages that we can send out to them so they're very aware of um, design development. And that's really opened up our business, working a lot more in, in other places besides our regional areas of Chicago and New York. And that's, um, that's been a game changer. That's so nice because it keeps your clientele and it just it broadens it. You follow them where they go. You meet people that they meet along the way. It's a really mm -hmm. cool, um, I guess, a good thing that's happened from COVID. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. It's a silver yeah. lining. Definitely. And going on that, too, you know, when I talk to other designers, I think we all usually agree that our best business comes from our existing clients, uh, people we've worked with, because they tend to refer people to us that we also want to work with, yeah. um, you know, more so than the publications, more so than you know, things like that, that oh, we'll really- We'll take that too, though. A hundred percent, yes, <laughs> bring more, <laughs> absolutely, I'm open. Um, but yeah, I think that, that at the end of the day, it's really nice to be able to keep your clients and, and meet their friends and be able to work. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. Jeff, what do you see on the horizon for yourself and Hester Painting? Well, um, a lot of times people talk about quality and service and everybody says, we have quality, we have service. Um, I think the reason that Hester Decorating has been so successful is we, we train our men, we have the best painters, our men go through an apprenticeship, they go to school one day a week and they work four days a week. Um, we've, the, the two men that my father started the business with um, retired with our company and so we actually, that's the way we build our our service and our reputation. Our men are proud of what they do. It's not their, uh, until I get a better job job, it's their career. They have pensions, they have health and welfare. My men get paid, or, and women, I, I wanna make sure everybody understands, I, it's a habit that older guys just don't think about that often. Um, but we, our journey persons um, can do anything in the field. Everybody has specialties, and the way that Stephen and I are looking toward our uh, eventual retirement is we have this constant ladder flow of new talent coming in, getting trained in our ways. Um, we have my three boys that are in the business that will eventually will be able to walk away and know that it's going to run for a long time into the future, um, and it's endless. I mean, it's it's a fun thing to watch develop you build a team and you let it go and so it's, true. it's actually a yeah. you take pride i know my father would and i i know i am taking pride in the younger people taking over yeah. nice well thanks for sharing that and as we've really talked about the power of color and what um, transformative um, nature it has in our interiors and our exteriors within our communities um, it's it's been very enlightening. Um, and with that said, I understand that you are also active in your community. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we um, started a, uh, we call it Hester Cares program. And uh, we started it when we were going to turn 40 years old, instead of um, having a big party and celebration of our workers, we all decided the employees and the management staff said, Let's do something to give back to the community that, that supports us so well. So we reached out to our clients, we reached out to our employees, and we said, do you guys have a uh, charity project that could use a paint remake? And we okay. got about 15 in the first year, so 40, our 40th anniversary, we got 15 uh, responses anywhere from painting this whole high school, which obviously was not what we intended to do <laughs> to helping. So we ended up going out and looking at these places. We did a place in Naperville called Almost Home um, for our 40, and every five years we've been doing this, about 30 of our employees um, volunteered. Then we did a remake when we were, our 45th anniversary, we did a remake 
a redo of the Wilmette Theater. Um, and we restored the lobby there. And then for our 50th, we did um, Maryville Academy in Chicago. We painted all their hallways and their lobbies. And this year is going to be our 55th. And we're actually, because we've got pretty much all the employees want to do this, we're doing two different um, projects. And we're going to announce it uh, later in April of what we're doing. And um, we've wanted to mention that we've won Make It Better's Best Painter since they've had it. We've, won we've been undefeated in winning it every year, which we take great pride because our customers vote on that. And so that's really that's exciting. exciting. Yeah. That's so exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, well, thank you, Joan, Lauren, Annie, and Jeff. We really appreciate your expertise and sharing your thoughts with our audience. And we really look forward to seeing what you and your companies accomplish. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.